Hey guys, what's happening? So, I'm in the process of like uh, redoing my radio system over here. And I kind of go through waves. I mean, I, I, I'm into it for like five years or a couple years. I'm out of it. I get into something else. But then, kind of back into it again. So I'm kind of redoing my um, CB radio area. But um, So I got bought a, quite a few CB radios. And um, my issue is, like, is, is, is antennas. So I decided to buy one of these antenna analyzers. And um, it's pretty cool. Let me show it to you. I got a super good deal on it on eBay. 25 bucks plus five dollars shipping, so about 30 hours. It's a Nano VNA uh, H4, so it's, so it's a bigger screen. Like normally these are around 75 bucks. So I guess this is like an open, um, like an open return, I guess, or open box. I'm not sure what the guy said, but I guess it can do uh, 10 kilohertz to uh, 2.7 gigahertz. So yeah, pretty nice. I mean, it has the plastic sticker, I think, and all the accessories. I mean, I fired it up and tested it um, last night, and then I also designed like, like a box for it here, like a desk mount. I'll show you that. But this video is really going to be more about the like the internals of this thing, because I really don't even know how this thing. I mean, I know kind of basically how it works because I've watched a couple of videos, but um, like I said, I'm not an RF I'm really person, you know. I mean, my, my experience with RF is mainly IT related, um, besides my own radio experience going back to my teenage days. But yeah, I'm not really into like the RF voice type stuff, so, um, but I actually am really familiar with the ARM processors, and that's actually what this thing runs, so that's actually what I want to see, I want to see what this thing's based on, the internals, the hardware, um, yeah, I've been messing with the ARM processor for, for at least 20 years, going back to my, like, my, uh, satellite, ha satellite hacking days, cable modem hacking, um, cable box hacking, phone freaking boxes, phone dialing boxes. Um, yeah, but back then it was mainly like 8-bit uh, Admiral chips. You know, actually the, the mega squirt fuel injection systems. Um, so I'm really familiar with programming the, what's it called, the the ARM processors. Um, so that's what it looks like this. so far. That's what it seems like it's based on, is an ARM processor. So here's a closer look at it. Yeah, this is the little box I, I made here for it. It's going to hold the probes, hold the wires. But it's nice because it's just on the desk mount. I can actually have it and I can control it. USB. So my goal is I'm going to be, I have a bunch of antennas I'm, I'm testing. And so I need to, I need some, well, I mean, besides like a, just like a little cheapo SWR meter, I want to have better insight on what's going on with the capacitance, like the attenuation, um, you know, the internal resistance, also SWR can run a thing. So I'm actually designing and machining some antenna mounts. Um, I haven't actually uploaded any videos about this, but I'm actually machining these. But they're going to be like experimental antenna mounts. So I needed a better way to analyze those, those antenna mounts. So, all right, well, let's take this apart. Um, so my guess is there might be two 32-bit ARM processors on here because typically, even like in the 3D printing world, like you'd have a th you'd have a ARM processor that controls the logic and function of the board, the inputs and outputs, but then you'd, lots of times you'd actually have a, another ARM processor which controls the LCD. So the LCD might have its own ARM, pro ARM processor, which controls the actual function of the uh, touchscreen and stuff. Just because the the, the ARM processors themselves are kind of you don't really have a lot of storage capacity on the ARM processor. Um, but let me open it up. I'll go into more detail. So what I noticed on YouTube is there's a lot of videos about how to use this thing, but there's no videos on how what it looks like inside. So yeah, I'm really mainly interested in the actual hardware, which, which actually runs this thing. So is it just a single board? This looks different than the regular non-version 4. So the version 4 has a bigger screen, but hey, so here's a closer look at the board. Um, so I guess I'm wrong. I guess there's only one ARM processor that controls the LCD function and the actual uh, the logic, the antenna logic. So I wonder if they're actually running a bootloader on this thing. Um, because the only firmware upgrade videos I watch or even on, on the thing is actually to put the, the CPU in the DFU mode and to flash it directly. But with the bootloader, what you can do is you can tell the ARM processor to pick up like a firmware file from the SD card. 
so like I said, like in the 3D printing world, you could upload a file called like uh, like firmware.bin, and as soon as this thing boots up, it looks at the SD card and will pull, pull the firmware down. But um, where is it? Lithium battery. So I know what these uh most of these ARM processors, you have a few of these pins that are dedicated to like uh they're called DAX or digital digital analog converter ports. So yes, yeah, so if you're not familiar with this, you just basically have a bunch of inputs and outputs and you create logic um, that basically does something. So if if I get this input, I do that output. You just create basic logic based on what you're receiving and outputting. Um, but what's interesting about these things is that the internal storage, the operating system, is actually stored on the actual chip itself. So besides doing you know, all the inputs and output function, it also stores the operating system. Um, so it doesn't run Linux. It runs like a, it's like a proprietary. This is basically like the, I mean, it's basically like a, our Arduino. Like I said before this, we had 8-bit Atmel chips. Um, antenna stuff, so USB-C. Now, if you ever get in trouble with this thing, you can always flash this thing um, via like an ST-Link. That's what probably some a lot of these headers are right here. Yeah, you are. It's stuff I right hear you know. So, like I said, normally, even like with 3D printing boards and most boards, there's usually a way to... Usually it's called SWF port. Or no, excuse me, SWD port, set software download port. Um, but yeah, so if you ever corrupted your, 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 your processor, you could reflash with an ST-Link. Um, I wonder if I can get these. Like, I, don't, I, mean, I don't want to break this thing, but... Yeah, I can't tell if there's a solder on there or not. But I wonder what's under this, this RF shield in here. So I wonder what chips are using. Yeah, whoever designed this thing is crazy smart. Because not only do they need to know, be an expert in RF, they need to be an expert in programming too. You know, software coding. So, disk lord, I guess, is a... I think the disk lord is the inventor of this thing. Um, yeah, it's crazy, crazy smart. So... Yeah, I guess I'm not going to go too... I mean, I don't, I'm not going to go too far into it. I just really wanted to look at this stuff, but at least I don't want to break this thing before I even start using it. But uh, I'm going to put it back together, and uh, I'm going to put my stuff inside my little box here. Nice. Right, so I knew this video didn't say much. It was mainly just me talking, but... Um, all right, so here's that box. And, well, yeah, like I said, I needed something that had more... I needed more insight for my antenna mounts. So this is going to be a quarter-wave uh, ground plane antenna. I've not uploaded the video yet, but those lines are going to be cutting like radials, holes for radials. I'm going to have radials at 45, 90, and the other 45. It's like 135, I guess. Um, so 135, 90, and 45. 45 down. And this is just going to be like that. But like I said, I haven't uploaded the video yet. It's going to be quarter wave. But I'm also working on dipoles too. So like I said, I needed a, a really good way to be able to verify what I'm doing is working correctly you now. Um... Yeah, I'm also in a video about this. This another little ground plane design here that I'm working on. All right, so if you're new to my channel, then um, I have a small machine shop in here, and I kind of mess around with that. And I design 3D printers and build those, and troubleshoot them for businesses and stuff like that. But all right, so all right, pretty cool. I mean, I can't believe I scored that for 25 bucks, though. Well, hopefully it works. I don't know why it didn't. I mean, I don't know why it was so cheap, but I guess we'll find out. All right, so besides the existing stuff that came with it, I'm going to put all my other little little adapter pieces and stuff to this thing in here. If I can get them in and put them there. Um, I mean, it only took me an hour to print the box. I could always redesign the box. Um, that in there. All right, looks like I got some testing to do, but yeah, I'll fit in the box. Go through that again. And uh, the cool thing is it will actually hook up to my um, computer too. So I'm mean, actually the software seems like it's a little bit better. You know, you can see it in full full screen. So um, yeah, because I know I have like at least four or five antennas I want to analyze. So um, all right, guys, cool. I mean, all right. All right, I'll put this to my Thingiverse page, and if you want it, they will work with a H4 Nano uh, VNA H4. All right, guys, cool.